Hey guys, DMV Solar Rider back with another video. Today we are at the scene of the crime. What crime are you asking? Well, this is where I shot my Short Rider 6,000 mile review of my 2019 Indian Chieftain Dark Horse. I thought this would be the appropriate location for today's video. What video is that? It's my introduction of my brand new 2020 Indian Challenger Limited. Let's get a look at her. So if you've watched my videos, you know that my very first motorcycle was a 2019 Indian Scout in bright red with some white stripes. My chieftain was the dark horse, so it was all blacked out. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I always miss the red. I just love it. And I know blacked out bikes are all the rage. But honestly, there is something special about bright red and chrome. And when I decided to get the Challenger, the Challenger Limited in bright red and chrome is exactly what I went for. So today's video, I'm gonna introduce you to my new Challenger. I am going to throw up the basic specs of the bike, horsepower, torque, all of that, dimensions. I'm gonna talk a bit about why I traded in my beloved 2019 Indian Chieftain Dark Horse for the Challenger. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my thoughts on the Challenger compared to the Chieftain so far. Uh, I've only put about 700 miles on the motorcycle, so I, in no way, shape, or form is this a review. Uh, for those who've been watching my videos, you know I have some peculiar issues with my neck and some, some physical discomfort when it comes to riding a motorcycle, so I'm going to talk a bit about that so far. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what's coming up for the bike. As you know from my other videos, I'm, I'm not mechanically inclined. I can read a sheet of paper that tells you the statistics. All I can really do is tell you what a bike feels like to ride, and that's the best I can do for you with my what, 15 months of experience riding motorcycles. Um, but what I am gonna do from kind of this point going forward in my videos, you know, I'll share things about the motorcycle as I learn them. Uh, again, I'm not going to do a review anytime soon. I think I did my review of my Chieftain at 6,000 miles. And that's probably what I'll do for the Challenger. Um, uh, and, you know, I'll just share little tidbits as I go along. Uh, i got a couple already to share with you today. Uh, but what I really wanted to do first was kind of show you the motorcycle versus me. As I mentioned in past videos, I'm about 5 foot 7 inches tall five foot six on a bad day but let's keep that between us uh, and this is a big bike uh, it's a little bit higher off the ground than the chieftain uh, on the chieftain i had the the balls of my feet firmly planted on the ground a little less so with the challenger so this is me on the bike as you can see i have the balls of my feet pretty firmly planted on the ground a little bit less than the chieftain um, but not so that you'd really notice uh, for the most part. I think this pavement's a little uneven, so actually I'm almost flat footing it right now. If I stand up in the seat, I'm totally flat footing the bike, but sitting down totally comfortable. Uh, I've got kind of the forward part of the balls of my feet and my toes on the ground. What I would say about the Challenger, similar to the Chieftain, especially compared to like the Street Glide or the Road Glide, uh, and you can go and look at my channel and see my test rides of those bikes. I don't know what Indian does compared to Harley, but these bikes don't feel that heavy. I mean, this is like a 830 pound motorcycle and you just don't feel it. Like I'm just, just barely tapping my feet on the ground and the motorcycle is virtually staying upright by itself. Hopefully you can see my feet right now. It's just amazing to me. 
And you know, I've watched plenty of, of motorcycle content about Indians and the Chieftain, and everyone says they're so well balanced, but it wasn't until I rode those Harleys that I truly appreciated it. And now sitting on this bike, which is actually a little bit, I think almost an inch higher up off the ground than the Chieftain, you know, the seat height, you just don't feel any weight. It's, it's really impressive to me. So if you're a small, smaller person like me, and you can't flat foot this motorcycle, don't let that be your end point. Go and check out the motorcycle, sit on it, and see how it feels. You know, sitting at a light with one foot on the brake and one foot down, it's not a problem at all. And it's not tiring. You don't feel a big heavy motorcycle against your leg. Uh, I certainly felt that way with the Harleys. So again, I don't know what exactly Indian does to make their bikes feel this way, but it's really liberating. Uh, for a smaller person. So I've got some notes here. There are some things I wanted to touch on right here at the beginning of my ownership of this motorcycle, uh, especially compared to the Chieftain. So I put about 700 miles on the bike and I'm pleased to say that the fixed fairing is definitely, for me at least, a superior experience to the Batwing fairing on the Chieftain. Uh, on the Chieftain, I put a 12 inch windshield on because the stock windshield was too short. Uh, I had too much head buffeting. And even with the 12 inch windshield, I still had a ton of buffeting. Now, as you'll know from my other videos, I had put a little extension piece on the top of my windshield, which could give me up to an additional six inches. And I usually kept it at about probably 14 to 16 inches high altogether. And when I did that, that pretty much eliminated the buffeting. The problem is, I had to look through the windshield at all times, even when the windshield was all the way down. And for me personally, I hate that. I mean, you're already looking through one visor. You don't have to look through a second, especially when it comes to some of the distortion you can get from a windshield. And so when I rode the road glide and I was so dazzled by the fixed fairing, uh, in terms of the lack of buffeting, not having to look through a windshield and still feeling protected, but not liking the motorcycle overall, it made me revisit the Challenger. I took a Challenger out for a test ride by myself at high speeds. <laughs> Let's just say I was going fast enough to know if there would be buffeting or not. And I was really happy with the result. Uh, it's something that I don't know that I, I really paid attention to enough with, with my other Challenger rides. I think this was like the fourth time I had ridden the Challenger. And it just, you know, I really paid a lot of attention to how the fairing felt, uh, to the buffeting, uh, to how, where I needed the windshield up and down, and for my size and for the kind of seating position that I need, where I needed to be. Because, you know, ultimately, I'm going to need a very upright seating position. So while I was riding that Challenger, I was sitting straight up, as up, upright as I possibly could, sticking my head in the air. I really felt very little maybe a little bit of dancing on the top of my helmet but light and light years from what I experienced with the Chieftain so you know as I mentioned in some of my videos that buffeting was a big issue for me and was a key reason why I decided to trade in my Chieftain for my new Challenger another thing that I wanted to touch on about the fairing you know when I when I was talking about why I originally chose the Chieftain over the Challenger I had talked about how you know, when I was kind of duck walking the Challenger around, I was a little uneven, didn't feel as comfortable to me. You know, that was, what, six months ago? Almost seven months ago? I think I just was nervous. And, you know, the Chieftain was the first of the two that I rode. And it was, you know, far bigger than a Scout. And it went great. I was comfortable on it. And then when I had that little bit of experience with the Challenger, it kind of freaked me out, made me a little nervous. And I think it kind of, it kind of gave me a false sense of the motorcycle. Uh, and you know, every ride I take is more and more experience. Uh, you're more and more comfortable, especially on a big bike. And so, you know, once I rode the Challenger again after that, you've seen it on my uh, test ride video from uh, Indiana Fredericksburg's demo day. I experienced none of that. I didn't feel any extra weight in the front end. Um, and I certainly don't now that I've put 700 miles on it. I can tell you what I actually feel 
especially at low speeds and stop and go traffic is is less weight you know when you are just inching along as little as possible just going fast enough where you don't have to put your foot down to stop and you're just you're feathering the clutch you're just goosing the throttle you got your back foot on the brake to keep you create that tension to keep you upright it actually feels a feels lighter than the chieftain uh, it makes low speed maneuvering on this motorcycle a little trickier because I think the chieftain had a little extra weight that kept it just a little bit more planted in that you know super low speed I'm not talking about inching along in first gear with the clutch out I'm talking about when you were inching along at a snail's pace barely moving and the whole time you're asking yourself do I need to stop and put my foot down or can I make do when you're doing that kind of low speed maneuvering that's when you notice the lack of weight on the fairing and the steering feels a little looser it's not a bad thing it's just something you have to get used to so that's really the, the main takeaway from the fairing is no buffeting or, or very little buffeting uh, and the lack of weight up front so some additional thoughts about the challenger in comparison to my chieftain again after only 700 miles this is not a review it's just the things i'm kind of thinking about feeling while i'm riding this bike moves this bike is so maneuverable when you're going around corners on this bike it leans in like that when i'm riding this motorcycle so far it feels far more like an indian scout than a chieftain um, you know my chieftain over time i put on the reduced reach handlebars and i put on the two inch right handlebar risers so i had a very upright seating position and i can tell you that while it was great for me it took some getting used to kind of the farther i moved away from from the stock seating position and the stock handlebar position it was a little harder to lean into turns it was a little harder to maintain your turn through a curve it's not bad it worked for me but it does take some getting used to so now that i'm riding the challenger in its stock far more aggressive forward seating position it's so easy to turn and so you know i'm gonna take it in this weekend when i get its uh, brake in service i'm gonna have indians two inch reduced reach handlebars added to the challenger and even if I could get a riser for this motorcycle, I would probably try to avoid it only because I don't want that extra two inches to make that, that turn in a little more difficult. And on that note, uh, as those of you who watch the channel know, the reason I did all those modifications to the Chieftain is that I have herniated discs in my neck. I have uh, uh, now two pinched nerves as a result one i've had for years another is a result of riding my indian scout for 5700 miles so i need a pretty upright seating position the stock challenger doesn't have it obviously you're you're over like that uh, so this weekend i'm getting those two inch reduced reach handlebars put on the bike as i mentioned uh, i can tell you that i already have my old shoulder pain that's uh, a product of my pinch nerves returning from the 700 miles i put on this bike that was kind of expected obviously it's a much more aggressive seating position than i've had on my chieftain but i'm pretty confident those two inch reduced reach bars will go a long way to solving that um, there aren't handlebar risers for the challenger there's just no room under the fairing um, the only other solution if the two inch handlebar uh, reduced reach bars aren't far back enough is going to be probably a seat option and ultimate seats is coming out with uh, their challenger seats by the end of the year i would expect one of their seats will be a reduced reach seat which will move you about an inch inch and a half closer to the handlebars which is pretty much going to give me exactly what i had on the chieftain and ultimately that's why i decided to get the challenger instead of sticking with my chieftain um you know that seating position is a big deal to me there's no way i could ride the challenger long term in the stock position in fact i really do need to be just as upright on this bike as i was on the chieftain knowing that i had a real good chance to get there is what made me comfortable with with trading the chieftain in on the challenger well guys the last thing i wanted to show you was the new ride command it has a lot of the same information that the other one had that's music Kind of a navigation in combination with other information 
But of course, here's what really matters to yours truly, Mr. Dummy DMV Solo Rider. That's right, I got my car play. There's Waze. And I can tell you that Waze has already saved my butt twice on Indian Head Highway going back and forth uh, down to Nanjamoy. Uh, I guess the police put up these new uh, automated radar detectors, camera combo things, and I wasn't expecting them, and Waze saved my bacon. So already saving me money over the Chieftain. So guys, that is a very brief introduction to my brand new 2020 Indian Challenger Limited. Uh, again, not a review. Uh, I won't do a, an actual review of this motorcycle for another... 5,300 miles at least uh, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I traded in the Chieftain which I absolutely loved for this motorcycle uh, talk a bit about you know how it seems so far after 700 miles uh, I'll continue to share my experiences as we go forward um, but I just wanted to give you a little intro uh, hopefully you love the red I'm a big fan and with all that I'm gonna head out for a ride so there are actually a few issues I totally forgot to mention in my little non-review introduction that I did want to mention. Uh, when I got this motorcycle, there were some rough edges around it. You know, just want to be candid about that. Their gas tank cap is broken. There's a little pin that sticks out when you open it. And when you close it, the pin goes in and that tells the motorcycle that the gas tank is closed. It's stuck out. So I had to use a credit card to press in on it close the tank so I got to get that fixed that's no big deal um, when I start the motorcycle it it struggles and half the time it won't start the first time I turn it on so I got to get that adjusted uh, there is kind of a, a slight rattling knocking noise when the rear cylinder deactivation is triggered I don't know if that's just normal for this bike at you know low mileage or if uh, there's something that needs to be tended to Th these are all things that will just get addressed um, in my break-in service it's nothing that I'm concerned about But the other thing I really wanted to address was the clutch. So the Challenger has a slipper clutch and the point of the slipper clutch, as I understand it, is if you're riding at high speeds and you go to downshift and you downshift, say, let, let's say you, you downshift two gears by accident. With a regular clutch, you could find yourself locking up the rear wheel and, and having a real bad day. And what the slipper clutch does is it prevents that. It basically, I, I think it basically keeps the bike in neutral to an extent until the engine speed and the transmission can sync up and then it goes into gear and, and you're fine. Something like that. But it's also the case that in the actual clutch lever, the friction zone seems to catch right, right when the lever is out. Um, you know, the first couple days I had the bike, it was a real bear. Uh, I, uh, for whatever reason, I've just been stuck in a world of stop and go traffic since I got the Challenger. So I've been doing a lot of low speed riding. <laughs> and that clutch was really tough the first couple days. Uh, so tough that there were a couple times in some serious stop and go traffic, I thought about pulling over just to give it a rest. Uh, but you know, I did my research. The friction zone definitely catches when the lever is at kind of the end of its throw. But you got to make sure if you're having trouble with that, that you checked out the free play on the clutch. Because when I got this bike, it had none. Uh, you couldn't wiggle the clutch lever at all. And the manual says clutch lever should have, you know, half a millimeter to 1.5 millimeters. So I, of course, added 1.5 millimeters, and it's a whole different ballgame. It's a thousand times better than, you know, the bike right out of the box. Um, friction zone still catches kind of at the end of the throw, but throws closer to you. So it, I don't think it really matters. 
It just takes a little getting used to. Anyways, uh, the last thing I would say is that my, my ride command system is a little sluggish. It takes a while to boot up. When you touch something, it takes like half a second to respond. So, you know, these are all things I'll just get addressed when I take it in tomorrow for its break-in service. You know, I've done all kinds of research on the bike. These are kind of common things people have experienced, and they're all easily solvable. And see, look. Some more stop and go traffic for yours truly. What in the world did I do to deserve this? One other thing that I've experienced so far is that of the three rider modes, rain is predictable. It's, you know, really underpowered in terms of the throttle response, which is what you want in rain mode. Sport mode is outstanding. Just, it's a sharp throttle. It'll, it'll get you in trouble if you're not careful, but it is, it seems very precise. And I'm not finding that that's the case with standard mode. Standard mode, the throttle is kind of a, a mess. Um, you know, low speed maneuvering in traffic in standard mode is a pain in the butt. I actually put it into sport mode when I'm in traffic. And it's kind of weird because on the Chieftain, it doesn't have rain mode, it has touring mode, which is actually great. Standard mode is also solid and sport mode is great. All three modes are excellent. And I just haven't had that same experience on the Challenger where standard mode is concerned. Don't really know why. Sorry guys, I don't mean to be filming on the ride now, but you know, standing there in front of the camera with the this beautiful red bike I just I couldn't freaking wait I had to get on the bike and go and I also forgot to mention a bunch of stuff so anyways uh, this bike is just smoking hot <laughs> let's put it this way I love the Chieftain I was never crazy about the all-black batwing fairing just cuz it's a little old-school and this Challenger is hot man it's bright red. I think it looks better than the Road Glide. I love that front headlight. It's sick. I feel like a badass riding this bike. Like a true badass. Like a peacock, baby. Strutting my stuff. That's part of riding a motorcycle. If you don't feel that way, there's something wrong with you. Unless your name is Shade Tree Surgeon, you're, you're riding the Krusty Glide. That's a whole different ballgame. All right, guys. That's, those are the things I, I meant to address. Now I'll send you back to your regularly scheduled programming so I can thank you for watching and ask you to hit that thumbs up button, click that subscribe, that notification bell, and catch me next week for our first official ride on the absolutely beautiful 2020 Indian Challenger Limited. If you like this video, I'd certainly appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, or you've been watching but you haven't subscribed, I'd certainly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Put my ride or ride related content out every Friday, so hit that notification bell and you'll get an alert when my new videos are out. Until the next ride, stay safe and I'll see you next Friday.